ಹರೇ ನಮಃ ನಮ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪದಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪೃಷ್ಠಾಯ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮಾತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಿ ನಾಮನೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ದೇವಿ ಘೋರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾರಿ ಪಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯತೆ ಶತಾರಿಣೆ ಪಂಚಕೌಪಾತರುಭ್ಯ ಕೃಪಸಿಂಧುಭಯ ಪತಿ ಪವಾನೇಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವಿಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತಗಧಾರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸಿ ಗೋರ್ಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ ಹರೆ So we're on mantra 15. We'd already begun the purport. I'll just read quickly through the verse and translation. Haranmayena patrena satya syapi hitam mukam tatvam pusha napavranu satya dharmaya dristaye. Translation, O my Lord, sustainer of all that lives, your real face is covered by your dazzling effulgence. Kindly remove that covering and exhibit yourself to your pure devotee. So we can see this verse is a, like a request to the Lord, praying to the Lord, indicating the Lord is not just some impersonal feature, not just some energy, but it's a person. We're addressing a person. So we say, Oh my Lord. No, a very great superior person, right? And the devotee is desiring to see the face of the Lord and not just see the effulgence. So we were on the purport. I think we read a few paragraphs, a couple of paragraphs. We were at the point where uh, we read about of the childhood play. I think we're there. Okay, Uttama Krishna Prabhu, you want to read? Haribo? Okay, somebody out. Chidananda Janardhan Prabhu? Thank you, Krishna Maharaj, I'm here. Oh, okay, please read for us of the childhood. Thank you, Krishna Maharaj. Of the childhood play between the Lord and his, and his playmates, the cowherd boys, Sukadeva Goswami says in Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th Kantu, the 10th Kantu, uh, 12th chapter, 11th Shloka. Itam Sakutam Brahma Sukha Anugutta, Dashyam Gatahanam Paradui Vatena, Maya Sitanam Naradara Kheena, Shakam Vivujya Krita Kunna Kunna Pujyaha. The personality of Godhead, who is perceived as the impersonal, blissful Brahman by, this, by the Ganes, who is worshipped as the Supreme Lord by devotees in the mood of servit servitorship, and who is considered an ordinary human being by mundane people, played with the cowherd boys, who had attained their position after accumulating many pious activities. Okay. Thus, So, Kita Punya Punja, the cowherd boys have performed many pious activities. So, what was the result of their pious activities? Pious? Uh, Maharaj, uh, the pious activities, uh, this playful, uh, this cow, cowherd boys or Krishna's uh, friend, uh, I don't think only the pious activities, it's, it's a sukriti or heavy. Uh, worshipping or servitorship as a servant of Lord previous of their life, they have done it. Because of that accumulated their uh, Sukriti or uh, devotional service, they got the opportunity to be associated with Lord and being his, uh, being his uh, 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 friend in Ka when Loi was uh, in Cowherd Boy's uh, role. Yes, okay, so they got to enjoy Sakya Ras. 
They, they could be friends with the Lord. But different people have different relationships. Okay, let's have some Chidananda Janardhan Prabhu can read. Haribo. Haribo, Chidananda, Chidananda Janardhan Prabhu is there? Yes, Prabhu. Yes, Maharaj. He is there, Prabhu. Maharaj. Please read for us. We're waiting. Uh, Maharaj, can I read instead of him? Maybe he has got able to... Okay, go, go ahead, Prabhu, please. The personality of God is... No. Uh, who is... Thus, thus the Lord. Uh, sorry, Maharaj. Sorry. Uh, thus, the Lord is always engaged in transcendental loving activities with His spiritual associates in the various relationships of Shanta, Neutrality, Dasya, Servitorship, Sakya, Friendship, Vastalya, perm, uh, Parental Affection and Madhurya, Conjugal Love. Go ahead. Since it is said that... Go ahead. Uh, can I? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, since it is said that Lord... Since it is said that Lord Krishna never leaves Vrindavan Dham, one may ask how he manages the affairs of the creations. This is answered in Bhagavad Gita 13.14-18. The Lord pervades the entire material creation by his planetary part known as Paramatma or Super Soul. Although the Lord personally has nothing to do with the material creation, maintenance and destruction, he causes all these things to be done by his plenary expansion. The Paramatma, every uh, par the Paramatma, every living entity is known as Atma, Soul, and the principal Atma who controls them all is Paramatma, the Super Soul, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Okay, thank you. So very clear, Pro the, the, how the Lord can do everything by his expansions. He's, he's eternally in the spiritual world. He never leaves Vrindavan Dham. He's always in Vrindavan Dham, but he manages everything. How does he manage it all? Through his different expansions, that he can expand himself. He can be everywhere through his energy, and through his Paramatma. The Lord pervades the entire material creation, plenary parts, Paramatma. Okay, we'll go ahead. Some, someone like to read? Prabhu? Hare Krishna Maharaj? Yes. Yeah, can I read? Please. Maharaj? Please. Hare Krishna? Maharaj, I can read? Yes, I said yes already. I said already, Prabhu, please read. We're waiting. Yeah, sorry, Maharaj. This system of God realization is a great science. The materialistic Sankhya yogis can only analyze and meditate on the 24 factors of material creation for they have very little information for the Purusha, the Lord, and the impersonal transcendentalist are simply bewildered by the glaring effluence of the Brahma Jyoti. If one wants to see the absolute truth in full, one has to penetrate beyond these 24 material elements and the glaring effluence as well. Sri Ishwapirnasha points towards this direction. Praying for the removal of uh, the Hiranmaya Patra, the dazzling covering of the Lord. Unless this covering is removed, so one, one can pursue the real face of the personality of Godhead, the factual realization of absolute truth, uh, absolute truth can never be achieved. Okay. So what are these 24 material elements? Do you know? Uh, like this uh, uh, five gross element. Yes. Earth, water, fire, air, ether. Then the working senses. Yes. Uh, then uh, knowledge senses. Yes. Mind, intelligence, ego, the subtle senses. Mind, intelligence, ego are not senses. Uh, false ego. The subtle body. Subtle body, yeah, man. So you've got how many working senses, how many knowledge acquiring senses? 
5 phi so it becomes 10 yes the gross element is 5 yes it becomes 15 uh huh what else the have you got three, three subtle element which is uh, uh, okay yeah, three subtle but what else 18 one thing more 18 then and then uh, uh, the sense Maharaj, the, the sense point. objects sense object yeah the sense objects how many five sense, sense objects five sense objects right Okay. So 18 plus 5 is 23. I'm missing one, Maharaj. Yeah, they're unmanifested. They're unmanifest. Okay, my Okay, so Sri Ishapan, so all of these 24 elements make up what? Uh, these 24 elements make up this. Uh, uh, these are the elements of material nature, Maharaj. Yeah, material nature, right. Material body also, material body is yeah. made up of these elements and there is also covering over the universe. Yeah, yeah. So we have to go beyond that and go yeah, beyond the covering of the universe. Where do we go? What do we come to when we go beyond the covering of the universe? Uh, when we cross this material universe first, there will be uh, Shambhu Loka and then there will be uh, Vaikuntha and then there will be Goloka. Yeah, but before you go into these planets, what's going to be there as you go out of the universe? First, there will be Brahma Jyoti. The Brahma Jyoti, right. That's what's mentioned, right? Yeah. So the Brahma yeah. Jyoti. So that's described here, the removal of the, this, Bra this Haranmaya Patra, Patra, Haranmaya Patra. What is that meaning? The Haranmaya Patra? The dazzling covering of the Lord. Right. It's, lens, no? it's like golden covering, right? Haranma. Yeah, yeah. Golden covering of the Lord. So yeah. praying to remove that so that you can see the personal feature. Okay, we'll yeah. go ahead. Someone else Thank please read. Next Prabhu, please read. Another person. Yes, Hare Krishna. The Paramatma feature of personality of Godhead is one of three primary expressions or Vishnu Tattva collectively known as the Purusha Avatara. One of these Vishnu Tattva who is within the universe is known as Shiva Sai Vishnu. He is the Vishnu among the three principal deity Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva. And he is the all pervading Paramatma and each and each and every individual being entity. The second Vishnu Tattva within the universe is Arbhodakashayi Vishnu, the collective supersoul of all living entities. Beyond these two in Shirodakashayi Vishnu, who lies in the causal ocean, he is the creator. Okay, somebody else has to continue. He's got a mic problem. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. He, he is the creator of all universes. The yoga system teaches the serious student to meet the Vishnu Tattva after going beyond the 24 material elements of the cosmic creation. The culture of empiric philosophy helps us one realize the impersonal Brahma Jyoti which is the glaring effusions of the transcendental body of the Lord Krishna, Sri Krishna. That the Brahma Jyoti is Krishna's effusions is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita 14.27 as well as the Brahma Samhita 5.40. Yasya Prabha Prabhavato Jagadanda Koti Koti Shvasesha Vasudhati Vibhuti Vinnam Tat Brahma Nishkalam Ananta Masesha Bhutnam Govinda Madhi Purusham Tamaham Bajami. In the billions and billions of universes, there are innumerable planets and each and every one of them is different from the others by its cosmic constitution. All of these planets are situated in a corner of the Brahma Jyoti. The Brahma Jyoti is, is but the personal race of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Govinda, whom I worship. 
This mantra from the Brahma, Brahma Samhita is spoken from the platform of actual realization of the absolute truth and the Shruti mantra of say, Upanishad under discussion confirms this mantra as a process of realization. The Isopanishad mantra is a simple prayer of prayer to the Lord to remove the Brahma, Brahma Jyoti so that one can see his real face. The Brahma Jyoti represents is described in detail in several mantras of the Mundaka Upanishad 2.2, 10 to 12. Yeah, go ahead. Hiranyamaya, uh, Maharaj can continue this? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, yeah. Hiranyamaya, Hiranyamaya, Parek Koshe, Virajam Brahma Niskalam, Taj Chubram Jyotishim Jyotis, Taj Yat Atma Vido Vido Vido. Natatra Suryo, Bhati na chandra tarakam nema vidyuta vidyut bhanti kuto aham agidaha tam eva bhantam anubhati sarvam tasya bhasha sarvam idam vibhata vibhati brahme vidam amratam purushtat brahma pashyat brahma dakshinatas chodharena Adas Chordavam Cha Purushatram Brahmani Brahmai Vedam Vishwam Idam Vastitam. In the spiritual realm, beyond the material covering is the unlimited Brahman effusions, which is free from material contamination. That effusion, while light is understood by transcendentalists to be the light of all lights, in that realm, there is no need of sunshine, moonshine fire or electricity for illumination. Indeed, whatever illumination appears in the material world is only a reflection of that supreme illumination. That Brahman is the is in front of and back in, in back. In the north, the south, east and west, and also covered and below, over it and below. In other words, that supreme Brahman effulgence spreads throughout both the material and spiritual skies. Thank you. So Prabhupada is giving us this uh, reference here from the Mundaka Upanishad. Mundaka Upanishad is very popular by the Gyanis, the Mayavadis. They like to quote that. Actually, there's only 11 mantras in the Mundaka Upanishad. Isha Upanishad's 18 mantras. Mundaka Upanishad only 11 mantras. So some of these Upanishads are very short. So Prabhupada is describing here about this Brahma Jyoti. This is the effulgence coming from the body of the Lord and Prabhupada is saying how the, the verse from the Brahma Samhita confirms the same thing which is stated here in this mantra of the Ishopanishad. The same point is made. And that the Brahma Jyoti is there and all the planets are situated in the Brahma Jyoti. And this Brahma Jyoti is the effulgence coming from the body of Govinda. So it's important to be able to quote these different scriptural references, how they support each other. There's no contradiction there between the Shruti the Shruti Mantra of the Vedas and also the Brahma Samhita. Brahma Samhita would be Smriti, not Shruti. So we can see there's no contradiction, they support each other. And this Ishopanishad Mantra is a prayer to remove that Brahma Jyoti, to see his face. And we get the nice description, these three verses quoted to us. So you can see why the Gyanis would like, those Gyanis Mayavadis, they would like very much this Mundaka Upanishad because it glorifies the Brahman. You see, it's described there, the Brahman, the Supreme Light. <laughs> so they would like all this, they would give a great importance to the light, you see, the oneness. They found just the light. Everything is just light. 
Someone told me, I know God, I know Krishna cannot be God. Shiva is God. Shiva is light. I said, Krishna cannot be God. He takes birth. <laughs> so difficult for people or conditioned souls have difficulty to understand Lord Krishna. But if they get the association of devotees, then they can understand. So Brahman everywhere. And people are thinking everything comes from the Brahman and Krishna also comes from the Brahman. That's what they think. We'll go ahead. Marijis can read. Some Mariji, please read. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Hare and Krishna. Mm -hmm. Perfect knowledge means knowing Krishna as the root of this Brahman religion. This knowledge can be gained from such scriptures as Srimad Bhagavadam, which perfectly elaborates the science of Krishna. In Srimad Bhagavadam, the author Srila Vyasadeva has established that one will describe the supreme tr truth as Brahman, Paramatma, or Bhagavan according to one's realization of him. Srila Vyasadeva never states that the supreme truth is a jiva, an ordinary living entity. The living entity should never be considered the all-powerful supreme truth. If he were the supreme, he would, he would not need to pray to the Lord to remove his darkened cover so that the living entity could see his real face. Yes, Prabhupada's making a very important point here, a very good argument, that, that if the Brahman is the supreme, then why is the why is the jiva why is the living entity praying to the Lord to remove the effulgence? If we if we are the supreme, then we don't need to pray to the Lord. We can do it ourselves. And so Prabhupada is saying, if he were the supreme, we wouldn't need to pray. But the fact that we are praying to the Lord indicates that we're not the supreme. So this is a good argument to those people who say the Brahman is the Supreme. We'll go ahead. Maharaji, another Maharaji, please read. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. The conclusion is that one who has no knowledge of the potencies of the Supreme Truth will realize the impersonal Brahman. Similarly, when one realizes the material potencies of the Lord, but has little or no information of the spiritual potencies, he attains Paramatma realization. Thus, both Brahman and Paramatma realization of the Absolute Truth are partial realizations. However, when one realizes the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Shri Krishna, in full potency after the removal of the Hiran Maya Patra, one realizes Vasudeva Sarvam Iti. Lord Shri Krishna, who is known as Vasudeva, is everything. Brahman, Paramatma and Bhagwan. He is Bhagwan, the root, and Brahman and Paramatma are his branches. Yes, so three realizations of the Absolute Truth. Brahman, Paramatma, Bhagavan. And they are all Krishna. No difference. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. So Prabhupada quotes 719 from Bhagavad Gita. Do you remember that verse? Uh, not really, Maharaj. No? I, I just... So, Bahunam Gyanmanam Anti Gyanavam Mam Prapajyante. Yes? Vasudev Sarvamiti. Then? Samahatma Sadurlabha. You know the meaning? No, you wouldn't know. What point is, anyway, Prabhupada is making a point here in the verse 719. Lord Krishna, he says, uh, Vasudev Sarvamiti, one realizes Vasudev Sarvamiti. What's the meaning, Vasudev Sarvamiti? Uh, Vasudev is the, uh, uh, like, he's the supreme? Yes. Like, he's the Lord. 
So Vasudev Sarvamiti means Krishna Vasudev is everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One realizes Vasudev Sarvamiti, no Krishna Vasudev. Is. So Vasudev is Prabhupada said he is Brahman, he is Paramatma, he is Bhagavan. They're different features of the Lord, right? Can you give an example? Can you give an example to describe the relationship between Brahman, Paramatma and Bhagavan? Uh, Man is the sun, the sunlight and the sun rays. Okay. The sun rays are what? The, uh, the, sun, uh, the sun is uh, Brahman and sunlight is Paramatma and Bhagavan is sunlight. Mm. The sun rays are what? Yes. The sun rays will be the the Brahman. The sun rays is the one Brahman, yeah. The, and and uh, the sun light is Paramatma and Bhagwan is the sun. Something I, I'm just confused in that. Okay. And the sun rays are the Brahman. And then the sun planet. And within the sun planet, there's a sun god. Sun god, yeah, yeah. The sun god is Bhagavan, right? Yeah, the sun, sun disk is Paramatma, yes Maharaj? The sun disk we can say is Paramatma, yes. I mean, it's not exactly Paramatma, but it's a, it's a, we're giving an example. Different phases of realizing the sun. We see the sun rays, we see the sun planet, and within the sun planet there's a sun god. So in the same way we realize God, we realize Krishna in different phases. Some people know God. By the Brahman, the all-pervading Brahman, the light, the energy, right? And some people know God by Paramatma. They see his all-pervading potency within everything. And other people, devotees, they will know God as Bhagavan, right? Personal. And I like even the point of view in another way also there. Yes. Can I share? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Maharaj, for giving me the opportunity. Maharaj, here is, is like that. Like in a room, there is a, uh, suppose that someone is uh, sitting there and said, could you please go outside and see that? So, person went, first person went and he said, yes, I have saw, I gone outside and I saw there is a huge daylight, everything is so bright. So second second person went. Second person says, uh, "I saw that there is a very big ground which is very powerful lights coming from there and is a circle." That's okay. Second person also right. So third third person went, who is a tattvagyani, means who has a full knowledge about Param Brahma. He went outside and he said, "This is not only light, not only the rounding very yulish or here uh, the uh, sun. There is a sun god is sitting in the middle of that." So all three people are right, but three people de yeah, realization or three people explanation is three different way. So this is like sunlight, sun, and and uh, and sun god. So this is like this is how this three manifestation of sunlight we can, yeah, from uh, sun we can see it or we can realize it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Very well. And Pra Prabhupada in, in this in his. Uh, purport here, he's describing, he said, Brahman, you know, we, we, we said that's realization of the knowledge of the potencies of the Lord. That's impersonal, we'll realize the impersonal Brahman. He, if one has, if, oh, one who has no knowledge of the potencies will realize the impersonal Brahman. So what does he have knowledge of? He doesn't know about the potencies of the Lord, he only knows Brahman. He simply knows the oneness, the Brahman. So he has very little understanding about the Lord. But then Prabhupada said, when one realizes the material potencies of the Lord, but little or no information of the spiritual potencies, he attains Paramatma. Hmm. Interesting. I don't know. I don't know where Prabhupada is quoting from. Where he gets this. Anyway, different realizations. 
both Brahman and Paramatma, different realizations, partial realizations, not complete, partial realization. Okay, we'll go ahead. Madhuji can read. One more minute. Yes, please read. In the Bhagavad Gita 6.4647, there is a comparative analysis of the three types of transcendentalists, the worshippers of the impersonal Brahman, Gyanis, the worshippers of the Paramatma feature, Yogis, and the devotees of Lord Shri Krishna Bhaktas. It is stated that there are Gyanis who have cultivated Vedic knowledge, are better than ordinary fruitive workers, that the yogis are still greater than the jnanis, and that among all yogis, those who constantly serve the Lord with all their energies are the topmost. In summary, a philosopher is better than a laboring man, a mystic is superior to a philosopher, and of all the mystic yogis, he who follows bhakti yoga, constantly engaging in the service of the Lord, is the highest. Sri Ishupanishad directs us towards this perfection. Okay. So Prabhupada is describing to us what is stated in the sixth chapter here of Bhagavad Gita. Three different types of transcendentalists, right? The jnani, the yogi, and who else? Bhakta. Bhakta, right. And so three types of yoga are mentioned in Bhagavad Gita. Jnana yoga, karma yoga, bhakti yoga. And so in the sixth chapter, Krishna has been given, Krishna is describing the culmination of his yoga ladder. And at the bottom of the yoga ladder, who's at the bottom? The jnanis. No. At the bottom of the ladder. Who? Karmis Maharaj. The Karmis, right. What does what is Prabhupada doesn't use the word karmi? What does Prabhupada call them? Laboring man. Yes, the laborer, right? Or the the fruit of worker, right? The the and then above them, who is above that? The yogis. No, I don't think so. The yogis. Prabhupada said, the jnanis also cultured are better, jnanis are better than the fruit of worker, right? So the jnanis are above the fruit of workers, the jnanis. Sometimes b even before the jnanis, we will say also the karma yogis. If you study the Bhagavad Gita, when you studied the Bhagavad Gita, probably they presented like that, that after the karma, after the ordinary fruit of worker, ordinary fruit of worker, he's not a yogi, he's just a karmi, just a mudha. But above that you've got karma yoga, and karma yoga, above that then you'd have jnana yoga. And then above that you have the yogis. The, but here they're just giving the fruit of worker and then the yogi, the, the jnani and then the yogi. And then above the yogi is who? Bhaktas. Yes, the bhaktas, right. They will use all their, all their energies for the service of the Lord. So that's right. So, so at the bottom you've got the laboring man, and then the philosopher, and then the mystic, and then the yogi, the bhakti yogi. Above the mystic is the bhakti yogi. So that's a yoga ladder. Okay, so let's go on to mantra 16. Mantra 16. Pra one, well, let's have a Prabhu chant the Sanskrit for us. One of the gentlemen, please, who would like to chant? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Prabhu. Pusan Nikarse Yamasuriya Prajapatya Pusan Nikarse Yamasuriya Prajapatya 
Yes, very good. Go ahead, read the translation. Translation by S. Bhaktivedanta Samshayatikas. O my Lord, O primeval philosopher, maintainer of the universe, O regulating principle, destination of the pure devotees, well-wisher of the of mankind, remove the affligence of your transcendental rays, so that I can see your form of bliss. You eternal supreme personality of Godhead like unto the sun as am I. Yes. So, this is another another prayer, right? Another prayer, the same prayer, same request, remove the effulgence. I will be want to see your form of bliss. So this is, you can see from, the, in the beginning of the Ishopanishad, it was more impersonal. But as we come to the end of this Upanishad, it's becoming very personal. We want to see the Lord, personal, very personal features. Okay, Prabhu, please go ahead, read the purport, begin reading for us. Uh, Hare Krishna <clears throat> The sun and its rays are one and the same qualitatively. Similarly, the Lord and the living entities are one and the same in quality. The sun is one, but the molecules of the sun rays are innumerable. The sun rays constitute part of the sun, and the sun and its rays conjointly constitute the complete sun. Within the sun itself resides the sun god, and similarly, within the supreme spiritual planet, Goloka Vrindavan, from which the Brahma Jyoti effulgence is animating, the Lord enjoys His eternal pastimes as verified in the Brahma Samhita 5.29. Chinta mani prakarasatma sukalpa braksha laksha vriteshu surabhi ravipala yantam lakshmi sahastra tata samka masebhya manam govindamadi purusham tamaham vajami Oh, I worship Govinda, the primeval Lord, the first progenitor who is tending the cows, fulfilling the desires in abodes, filled with spiritual gems and surrounding by millions of wish-filling trees. He is always served with great reverence and affection by hundreds and thousands of Lakshmis or goddess of fortune. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay, so we are hearing more description about the Lord and and the, the the living entity, the relationship between the Lord and the living entities. We had discussed this earlier when we spoke about Ekadvam Anupashata, the oneness. Yes, Maharaj. So Prabhupada gives the example, the sun and its rays, one and the same in quality. And so similarly, the Lord and the living entities, the same in quality. The molecules, the sun is one, but molecules of the sun rays are many, innumerable. In the same way, the Lord and the living entities. One Lord, Ekala Ishwara Krishna or Sabritya. The Lord is the Supreme and we are all His servants. So the sun's rays constitute part of the sun. And the sun, yeah, it couldn't be the sun without rays. In the same way the Lord wouldn't have any purpose without having a creation, without having His parts and parcels. It said, the Lord is originally one, but he became many for his own enjoyment. Just like 
in a family, husband and wife, they like to have a child. What, because it, it's more pleasure, more, more enjoyment there when you have the, the child. Without the child, then the, the, the home is not quite the same. And so the same way the Lord and His parts and parcels, the living entities. So, within, within the Son resides the Son God. Similarly, within the spiritual planet Goloka, we have the Lord's residence. Just described for us, right? The residence of the Lord. Yes, ma'am. You were telling us, right? What's the special features of the Lord's residence there in Goloka? Uh, uh, the Brahma Jyoti is emanating from the Lord's uh, body, and uh, it is a Chintamani Dham. Actually, referring to Brahma Samhita, and it is. Chintamani. Yes. What's Chintamani? Uh, it is like a, uh, the touchstone. Where is that touchstone? Uh, the Lord Krishna himself. Lord Krishna is a touchstone? Uh, like... Uh, I want you to tell me what is what like is this Goloka Dam? Uh, Sachidananda, like uh, it is the. Uh, sorry, Maharaj, I missed your word. I I'm, I'm just I just wanted you to describe Goloka for us. I wanted to hear. Uh, Lord Lord is reciting permanently with all his uh, um, well wishers uh, with a lot of uh, like. Uh, cows and uh, fulfilling uh, uh, the wish fulfilling trees uh, and um, and uh, lot of spiritual gems and uh, everybody serving them with great reverence yeah. and thousands of means uh, 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 serving them like you know goddess of fortunes right yeah there's his residence is made with chintamani right his abode is made with chintamani, chintamani, and the dust of the dam is also chintamani, and the trees are kalpa briksha trees. They can they can fulfil all the desires, but the people of the Goloka, the people of the dam are so special. They only desire fruit and flowers for the service of the Lord. They, they don't desire anything material for their sense gratification. They could, but they only want flowers and fruits to offer to the Lord. So there's Kalpa Briksha trees and Kamadenu cows, right? Yes. Not just ordinary cows, but Kamadenu cows. They can give everything, whatever they... But the devotees are so, spe so pure, they just want milk. To cook for the to cook the make milk products and milk sweets to offer to Krishna. So that's the nature of Chintam of the Goloka Dam. And of course, as you said, from his body comes that Brahma Jyoti. Okay, we'll go ahead. Prabhu could read. The Brahma Jyoti is described in the Brahma Samhita as a race emanating from the supreme spiritual planet Goloka Vrindavan. Just as the sun's rays emanates from the sun globe, until one surpasses the glare of the Brahma Jyoti, one cannot receive information of the land of the Lord. The impersonalist philosophers, blinded as they are by the dazzling Brahma Jyoti, can realize neither the factual abode of the Lord nor his transcendental form. Limited by their poor uh, fund of knowledge, such impersonalist thinkers cannot understand the all-blissful transcendental form of the Krishna. In this prayer, therefore, Sri Ishopanishad petitions the Lord to remove the effulgent rays of Brahma Jyoti so that the pure dev devotee can see his all-blissful transcendental form. Yes. 
So, we, you see the situation that the impersonalist philosophers, they become very attracted by this light. You see, they're thinking, because they read, we heard in the pre previous mantra, they read the Mundaka Upanishad, and they heard about the Brahma Jyoti, and the light is everywhere. So they come into the light, and they think, this is it. We're here, we're, this is it, this is the goal. And they get stuck there in the Brahma Jyoti. And they're thinking this is the ultimate goal. But they don't understand the light has to come from somewhere. Light has a source. So we have to understand the source of that Brahman. Where does it come from? They're thinking Brahman. They're just thinking Brahman is the cause of everything. Everything comes from the Brahman. Shank Shankaracharya preached Sarvam Kauvidam Brahma. He gave great importance to that statement from the scriptures, from the Vedas, that everything is Brahman. They didn't know about Krishna, right? And Krishna is described in the Bhagavad Gita. How is Krishna described in the Bhagavad Gita? Is Krishna also Brahman? Haribo? Brahman is uh, like it is it is one of the realization one of the stage of realization of Krishna. Yeah. So religions it's part of Krishna, or like uh, it's the initial stage of realization, which is the part of first stage of realization. It's we can call it as a part of Krishna. Okay. So is Bhagavan also Brahman? No, Bhagavan is the complete whole, uh, like the ultimate, uh, uh, the end realization, the last realization. How do, how does Arjuna describe him in Bhagavad Gita? Param Brahma, Param Dhamma. Yes, Param Brahma, right? The Param Brahman, the Para Brahman. That's the Supreme Brahman, right? There's a difference. We're tiny, yeah. we're tiny Brahman. We're Brahman, but we're very small Brahman. But Krishna is the Para Brahman, all right? The spark, we're just little sparks of the Brahman. We can easily be extinguished. Prabhupada gives an example about the fire and the sparks. The spark coming out of the fire can be extinguished. Krishna is a Parabrahman, he's like the big fire. It's not going to be extinguished. But the sparks, they can fall in the water, they may fall on dry grass, that's better. But if they fall in the water, they'll be extinguished. So the same way, the living entity in contact with the material energy, they can lose their Krishna, con they can lose their spiritual consciousness. So the jnanis, they are attracted by this Brahman, the light, but they, have, they don't know, they, they, they cannot understand the, 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 about the, the Lord, that he, this Brahman is just simply his effulgence. Hmm. He can realize neither the Brahman Jyoti nor realize the abode of the Lord, right? They can, they're not able to go into the kingdom of the Lord. They enter into the spiritual sky, into the Brahma Jyoti, but they're not able to enter into the kingdom, into the Vaikuntha. Into the, or into Goloka, they can't get into these planets. Why not? Why don't they get in there? What stops them? Uh, like uh, the, the, the ego actually which has to end completely, then only they will be able to, the false ego which has to completely get over, then only they will be able to enter. What's the qualification to actually enter in there? 
Yes, right, right. Devotional service, bhakti, bhakti. We have to have bhakti, devotion. Without devotion, we will not get into the kingdom of God. The jnanis, they may get into the Brahma Jyoti, but they're not going to get into the goal, into the Vaikuntha planets or into Goloka because they don't have bhakti. They have a little bhakti, but they don't have enough. They're not pure bhaktas. The jnana mishra bhaktas or the bhakta mishra, bhakta mishra jnanis. <laughs> They've got a little bit of bhakti there because they have to have a little bit of bhakti. And if whatever you do, you have to have some bhakti. But they're not really bhaktas, they're not devotees. They don't get into the abode of the Lord. They don't get to see the form of the Lord. So Prabhupada says, limited by their poor fund of knowledge. Right? The impersonal is it. They're Abhishuddha Buddhaya. They have their 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 mind their knowledge is not perfect. Because they're thinking, they're just think, simply thinking Brahman. They don't think of anything high. They don't understand that the Lord has energies. They're simply thinking only oneness, without variety. They don't understand this, that the Lord can have varieties of energies. They cannot understand the all blissful nature of the Lord's form. They're thinking, oh, don't be emotional. If you dance in the kirtan, this is emotion. Everything should be just peaceful. So this prayer, we're asking the devotee, the the pure devotees, the pure, Prabhupada mentioned, pure devotees can see the all blissful transcendental form. The, but the jnanis, they cannot, they're not able to see, they're, they're not pure. They haven't purified themselves. They've got that, they've got some desire there to, to, to become one. They've got this desire to merge and to become one with the, the Supreme. Sayujya Mukti. Sayuja Mukti, merging, will never be taken by the devotee because there's no opportunity to do devotional service. So we have to guard against that. The, you see, the jnanis, for them, they're thinking, the jnanis thinking liberation is the goal. But devotees not thinking like that. Devotees not anxious for liberation. The jnanis, they want, ang they're anxious to get liberation. That's the imperfection of their knowledge. They're thinking, just get out, material world. And what are they going to do when they get out of the material world? What do you think a jnani will do? Any ideas? Yes? What's a jnani thinking? What's his consciousness when he gets out of the material world? Uh, merging with the Lord, uh, religions. I'm sorry, Maharaj, your voice is not clear, breaking. Can you say again? Maharaj merging in the Brahma Jyoti, the Lord's religions. Right, he's merging. So he's thinking, aham brahmasmi. Hmm. Meaning what? Aham Brahmasmi. What does it mean? I belong to Lord Brahman. I am Brahman. It means I am I'm Brahman, Brahman, right? I'm not. I'm not the body. I am Brahman. I am Brahman. So that that's their realization. That is as far as their realization goes. I am Brahman. But they don't know. What is the function of Brahman? What are you supposed to do as Brahman? They don't know. They don't know what activity somebody is supposed to do if they know they're Brahman. So generally they stop everything. Don't act. Don't do anything. Just do nothing. 
Right? This is a mood, oneness, just nothing, do nothing, just sit. So this is their realization that I'm not the body, I'm Brahman, so I don't do anything, stop every, everything. They think all activities are material. They do not understand there can be spiritual activity, right? Yes, Maharaj. Do you know what spiritual activities are? What would be sp yeah? What would be spiritual activities? Uh, uh, like all the activities which we do for the pleasure of the Lord. Yeah. What do you do for Him? Uh, like uh, do, giving my arti every day, dressing Him, and then offering uh, pastry, food, bhoga, then abhisheka. Uh, yeah, you people like like to do puja. Huh? You do a lot of puja. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Maharaj. Hearing, chanting. Now. Yes, right. Hearing, chanting, right. Kirtan, right. <laughs> can hearing can and talking about the the Lord's pastimes, discussing like now is Damodar, so we're discussing about Damodar Lila, talking about all this. So the Lord, He likes to hear this. He likes to hear about all of His activities. It's great pleasure. The Lord not only eats, you know, <laughs> you know we like to cook for the Lord, but He doesn't only eat. He likes to also hear and He likes to also see the kirtan. He sees the devotees chanting and dancing. So this is spiritual activities. But the jnanis, they can't understand that. You go to the jnanis, you know, they're just going to sit and talk and you sit and listen and then meditation and don't talk, you know, like this. They don't know what is spiritual activity. So they don't realize the full potent, the full nature of the Lord. Right? Yes, Maharaj. Thank you. Okay, we'll go ahead. Someone like to read? Pranat Pranam Maharaj. Yes, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. By realizing the impersonal Brahma Jyotir, one experiences the auspicious aspect of the Supreme and by realizing the Paramatma or all pervading feature of the Supreme, one experiences an even more auspicious enlightenment. But by meeting the Personality of Godhead Himself face to face, the devotee experiences the most auspicious feature of the Supreme. Since He is addressed as the primeval philosopher and maintainer and well-wisher of the universe, the Supreme Truth cannot be impersonal. This is the verdict of Sri Swapanasar. The word Pusan, maintainer, is especially significant for Although the Lord maintains all beings, He specifically maintains His devotees. After surpassing the impersonal Brahma Jyoti and seeing the personal aspect of the Lord and His most auspicious eternal form, the devotee realizes the absolute truth in full. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Okay, Hare Krishna. So, <laughs> Prabhupada is describing the progression here, you see. After surpassing the impersonal Brahma Jyoti, get through the impersonal Brahma Jyoti and then you come to the personal feature. Of course, we don't have to realize the impersonal feature first and then go home. No, we don't worry about that. We just immediately give our attention to the personal feature. And if we know the personal feature of the Lord, then we will also get realization about the other aspects of the Lord. It's all included. The, so Prabhupada explains, meeting the personality of God in face to face and personal, personally seeing the Lord. Yeah, of course we see the Lord, we see the Lord in different ways. When you go to the spiritual world, you can see him there personally, but when we go to temple, we see the Lord there also in his 
uh, in his um, Archamurti form, in the deity, he is also manifest there. We can see the Lord face to face and we can see him in the pages of Srimad Bhagavatam. When you read Srimad Bhagavatam, one day you will see the Lord there face to face. And we know the Lord's holy name is not different from the Lord. So all of these different things, they are different manifestations of the Lord. So the Lord is very concerned for his devotees. He likes to maintain all of his devotees, to take care of them. So it's described here, he, he's a maintainer and well-wisher. So he's not just simply some energy, but he's very personal. And this is seen very clearly when the devotee goes back to Godhead, described how the Lord is so personal with the devotees, how he cares for them. So the Lord is the maintainer of his devotees. He maintains them spiritually and materially. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Yoga Kshema Vahamiyaham. I carry what you lack and I preserve what you have. This is man maintainer. So the Lord maintains all beings, provides for everyone. But, uh, oh, in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna said, Samoham Sarvabhuteshu Namedvishosti Napriya. He said, I envy no one. I'm equal to everyone. But whoever is my devotee, he is a friend. He is in me and I am in him. So Krishna has a very special relationship with his devotees. And Prabhupada said, it's natural. He said, just like a mother, just like a woman, they like children. They love all children, but they have a special love and affection for their own child. So that is natural. In the same way, the Lord is concerned for maintaining all beings, but he has a special interest in his devotees. And he wants to help them all to come back to him. So we get through the Brahma Jyoti, and then we come to the personal aspect, his most auspicious, eternal form. Oh, so, we, this is the, the ultimate realization of the Lord. The Lord, the devotee wants to know about the Lord and His personal features. So we get information about all of this also in the scriptures. So, we're not satisfied just to see some impersonal energy or all-pervading feature. Okay, we'll go ahead. Prabhupada can read. I continue, Prabhu? Yes, please. Manas? Yes. Hare Krishna. In his Bhagavat Sandarbha, Srila Jiva Goswami states, the complete conception of the absolute truth is realized in the personality of Godhead because he is almighty and possesses full transcendental potencies. The full potency of absolute truth is not realized in Brahma Jyotir. Therefore, Brahman realization is only partial realization of personality of Godhead. O learned sages, the first syllable of the word Bhagavan ba, has two meanings. The first is one who fully maintains and the second is a guardian. The second syllabus ga means guide leader or creator. The syllable one indicates that every being lives in him and that he also lives in every being. In other words, the transcendental sound Bhagavan represents infinite knowledge, potency, energy, opulence, strength and influence, all without a tinge of material inebriety. Inebriety, yes. Without a tinge of material and ebriety. In other words, it's all perfect, no faults, nothing wrong with any of it, it's all perfect. So, Prabhupada is quoting Jiva Goswami. Jiva Goswami, of course, wrote these Sandarbhas, which helped to summarize 
give us all the truths from the Bhagavad, based on the Bhagavad philosophy. So Bhagavad Sandarbha, he says, we have to realize the Absolute Truth. The full conception of the Absolute Truth is in the Personality of Godhead, because He is Almighty, possesses transcendental potencies. The full potency is not, then, then He goes on to explain, the full potency is not in the Brahman, in the Brahma Jyoti. That's only partial. Remember the very beginning, I think it was mantra one, it was described that realization of the Brahman is realization of which potency? Realization of Brahman is a Sat potency. Right, Sat potency. And realization of Paramatma was what? Is a Chit potency. That's Sat and Chit, right. And then Bhagavan is full realization, right? right. So the Brahman realization is simply realization of what? Satchidanand, the absolute. No, Brahman. Brahman. What is what do you realize when if you're Brahman realized, what have you understood? Brahman realization like uh, understanding the light, if we take the sun example. Yes, so how does it apply to us? You know, if somebody is Brahman realized, what does it mean? Then we realize that we are uh, not this uh, material body but the soul. Right. We realize we're not we the, that we're not the body. Know. Right. We re we've realized we're not the body. Right. We realize that far. So there's some. There's some relief there. The relief is no pain, no suffering. But there's no real pleasure. Just simply realizing that we're not the body. It means we don't suffer any of the miseries of the body. But there's no real pleasure, there's no real happiness, there's no bliss. You don't get any bliss in the Brahman. There's no suffering there though. This is the point. So this realization of the Brahman, I'm not the body, but they have no re they have no knowledge what to do when you come to that. I'm not the they just simply repeat, Aham Brahmasmi, Aham Brahmasmi, Aham Brahmasmi, I am spirit. But they don't know what is the function of Brahman. What what are you supposed to do? What is spiritual activities? And there has to be some activity. They think, they think all activities are material. They don't understand that spirit, there are spiritual activities. So they get only partial realization. So then it goes on to describe another definition of the word Bhagavan. Now usually we understand the word Bhagavan simply Bhagavan. Bhaga means opulence and van, one who possesses, one who possesses opulences. And then Parasharamuni, father of Vyasadeva, he described the six opulences of Bhagavan. Wealth, beauty, fame, knowledge. Do you remember? Six opulences. What are the six opulences of Bhagavan? That is a knowledge. Potency, energy, opulence, strength and influence. No, no, the, the Parasara Muni, he given another definition. Parasara Muni's definition. No, Maharaj, sir. Wealth, beauty, fame, knowledge, strength and renunciation. These six things. Generally, that's how we hear the definition of Bhagavan. In other places, in Prabhupada's books, it's described like that. But here is quoting Jiva Goswami, and Jiva Goswami is given a different definition of Bhagavan. Right? He says, first of all, ba, two meanings. Fully maintains, one who can fully maintain, and the second is? Guardian. Guardian. 
So, you know, very, very nice, you know, that we, we can feel somebody is maintaining us and also protecting us. He's not only maintaining us, but he's our guardian, looking after us, going to protect us. And then, second syllable, ga, meaning guide, leader or creator. We like to have a leader, we want a leader, we like, you know, it feels very nice to know somebody's leading us, guiding us. So this is the Lord. And then finally, Van, that every living being lives in Him, and that He also lives in every being. That's very nice. Just like, there's a nice song by Naratam Dasthakur, he also th sings like that. He says, uh, uh, the Vaishnavas are in my heart, and I am in the hearts of my devotees. Like that. The Lord says, I am in the hearts of my devotees, and my devotees are in my heart. So like the same point is made here. Right? The Lord is in the hearts of the devotees, as the Paramatma. The, uh, he personally appears in his devotees who have surrendered, taken shelter of him. And the devotees, they're in the Lord's heart. We wonder. So in other words, the sound Bhagavan represents and then list all of these different opulent, these different things. Knowledge, infinite knowledge, potency, energy, opulence, strength, influence. So this is definition of Bhagavan. We want to understand that the Lord in these ways, you know. The Brahman has not, nothing like that. You understand the Lord simply as Brahman, there's nothing. There's only, there's just a oneness. There's no question of anything, anybody maintaining or potencies or energies, no. Not, nothing like that. It's all just, there's just simply the impersonal oneness. So that is their conception of the Brahman. You can see how it's very limited what they think is the Lord, what they think is the Supreme, how they describe the spiritual existence. There's very little understanding. We'll go ahead. Maharaji, please read. Some Maharaji can read for us. Didn't read yet? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. The Lord fully maintains His unalloyed devotees and He guides them progressively on the path towards devotional perfection. As the leader of His devotees, He ultimately awards the desired results of devotional service by giving Himself to them. The devotees of Lord sees the Lord eye to eye by His causeless mercy. Thus, the Lord helps his devotees reach the supermoon spiritual planet Uloka Vrindavan. Being the creator, he can bestow all necessary qualifications upon his devotees so that they can ultimately reach him. The Lord is the cause of all causes. In other words, since there is nothing that caused him, he is the original cause. Consequently, he enjoys his own self by manifesting his own internal potency. The external potency is not exactly manifested by him, for he, is, he expands himself as the Purusha, and it is in this form that he maintains the features of material manifestation. By such expansion, he creates, maintains and annihilates the cosmic manifestation. Okay, thank you. So a little technical descriptions here. We're told about the Lord, how he is uh, re relating first of all with his devotees. The, Nothing caused him, he is the cause of everything. 
and he enjoys his own self. And he manifests by, by manifesting his own internal potency, the Lord's internal potency. We're hearing about the, the spiritual world, the Lord's internal potency. The Lord is there with all of his devotees, the very special, pure devotees who are constantly with the Lord. And his own dham, his own abode, is all his internal potency. It's not different from him. Right? Goloka and the spiritual world, all the cows, all the paraphernalia, everything, it's all his own internal potency. Srimati Radharani and the gopis are all expansions from Srimati Radharani. All of these different things, Nanda Maharaj and Yashoda Mata and Vasudev and Devaki, they're all the Lord's internal potency, right? That's the spiritual world. But then you've got the external potency. And Prabhupada said this expands from, not exactly from the Lord Himself, but from the Purushas, meaning from, who are the Purushas? Right. So, in these features, the, the, you've got to, the universes come out of Mahavishnu or Karanadaka Shai Vishnu, right? Yes, Maharaj. And then what happens after the universes come out from Karanadaka Shai Vishnu? From each universe, the expansion of Garbhodakshaya, each universe has one one Garbhodakshaya Vishnu. And from Garbhodakshaya Vishnu's well, when lotus comes out, and on that lotus, Brahmaji is there. And on the top of each universe, there is a Shweta deep where Chirodakshaya Vishnu resides. Okay, very good. Yes, very good. And Chirodakshaya Vishnu, what does he do? He, he 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 is uh, every he is all pervading. He expands himself as a paramatma in everyone and in each atom also. Okay. Yes. Very good. Right. So by such expansions, the Lord expands like this. So material world is going on. Material world means creation, maintenance, and annihilation. All right. Go ahead. Someone read. Maharaji or, or Prabhu either. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Hare Krishna. The living entities are also differentiated expansions of the Lord Self. And because some of them desire to be Lords and imitate the Supreme Lord, He allows them to enter into the cosmic creation with the option to fully utilize their propensity to lord it over the nature. Because of the presence of his parts and parcels, the living entities, the entire phenomenal world is stirred into action and reaction. Thus the living entities are given full facilities to lord it over material nature. But the ultimate controller is the lord himself in his plenary feature as Paramatma, the super soul, who is one of the Purushas. Okay. So the ultimate controller is the Lord Himself. The Lord. Yes, Master. Right. In which form? The out is He there? The Lord Himself. He's ultimate a as a super soul. Right. He is one of the Purushas. When the living entities come into the material world, He has a desire to. Lord it over. Lord it over material nature. Right. Trying to exploit the resources. Right. Yes. So the Lord facilitates, right? He gives, he, he wants the living entity to have this opportunity. Right? Yes, Maharaj. So is this good for the living entity? To do this? I know. What's going to happen? They said that the, the living entity, the living entity is given full facility to lord over material nature. Does it mean we become God? 
yes, marriage. We become God, huh? We become entangled, ma'am. Sir, so, as marriage, I am really sorry. I think it is breaking for me. That's why I am able to hear your voice. Uh, okay. Anyway, living entities come into the material world. Is trying to enjoy. Ah, uh, uh, yes, marriage. Yes. Is he going to be successful? No marriage, because this world is a, uh, you know, dukkhalayam and ashashwatam. So we cannot be happy in the material world. Okay. So what will happen? Um. So ultimately, you know, he'll be like start thinking, uh, like he'll jignyasu, like uh, start realizing like who is he and what is the relation with the Lord. Start realizing, and what is the ultimate happiness? Okay. Where he can get that happiness. Okay. Thank you. Well, go ahead. Prabhu can read. But Maharaj. Yes. Maharaj. Yes. Honest for a devotee, what is the what for a devotee? What is the difference between material world and the spiritual world? A devotee always he is trans, always he is connected with Lord. So wherever he is located, does it make really difference? No. Not talking about devotee. No, if you're the, if you're the if you're the pure devotee, there is no difference. If you're a pure devotee, you can be anywhere. Doesn't matter. Okay, but go ahead. But, Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Dhanabad Pranams. Thus, there is a gulf difference between the living entity, Atma, and controlling per. Hare Krishna, what happened? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yeah. Thus, thus there is a gulf of difference between the living entity and the. And the controlling Lord Paramatma, the soul and the super soul. Paramatma is a controller and Atma is a control. Therefore, there are different categories. Because the Paramatma fully cooperates with the, with the Atma, he is known as a constant companion of the living being. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, can you tell me more about the relationship between Atma and Paramatma? Uh, uh, Maharaj, it is like uh, the, there is a uh, one is bird uh, in the heart, which is uh, eating the uh, fruit, and another one is watching it. So, Atma and Paramatma is together always. Okay. Anything else? Anybody else? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Maharaj, uh, Paramatma is Vibhu and we are Anu. Okay. We are minute. Yes. So? So, the, our uh, uh, constitutional position is to serve, serve the rendering the service to the, uh, the uh, super soul. So, what does the super soul do? The super soul just sits there and takes service? No, what? It protects the and uh, he sees, oversees the Atma, whatever the activities he's doing, he supersees. Right, he's the overseer. Upadrasta? Yeah. Upadrasta yeah. and? Upadrista and Anumanta, the overseer and the permitter. Permitter, yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Also, 1515, Bhagavad Gita 1515 says, what's the super so? Yes, from him comes knowledge, remembrance and forgetfulness. Go ahead. Go ahead, let's have somebody read. Prabhu? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, please read. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Read, please read. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare all Krishna. All pervading features of the Lord which exist in the circumstances of waking and sleeping as well as a potential state and from the 
jiva's shakti living force is generated as both condition and the liberated souls is known as brahman since the lord is orig- origin of both parmatma and brahma he is the origin of all living entities and all else that exist once who knows this engages himself at once in a devotional service of the lord such a pure and fully cognizant devotee of the lord is fully attached to him in the heart and soul and whenever such a devotee assembles with the similar devotees they have no engagement but the glorification of the lord's transcendental activities those who are not perfect uh, as a pure devotee namely those who have realized only the brahman or parmatma features for the lord parmatma features of the lord cannot appreciate the activities of the perfect devotees the lord always helps the pure devotee by imparting necessary knowledge within their hearts and thus out of his special favor he is dissipates all the darkness of ignorance the speculative philosophers and the yogis cannot imagine this because they more or less depends on their own strength as stated in kal katha upanishad 1.2.23 the lord can be known only those who those whom he favors and not by anyone else such special favors are bestowed upon his pure devotees only shri upanishad thus points to the favor of the lord which is beyond the purview of the brahma jyoti hari krishna uh-huh. hari krishna hari krishna so this is very special if we see proper is describing how the activities of the devotees they cannot be appreciated by the gyanis and the yogis when they see the devotees chanting and dancing when they see us taking so much trouble to dress the deities and to offer arti they cannot understand all these activities it's they think oh just we're wasting our time so our activities are on a special level which they cannot understand and probably also explains that how the devotees get help from krishna for everything which they do we get a lot of blessing we get a lot of mercy that krishna helps the devotees that he's giving special favors helping us to come out of ignorance he's helping us in many different situations but the yogis their process and the gyanis their process is they do everything by their own effort right their process is like going up pulling up climb up the rope is very slow it's a lot of trouble labor to go up the rope but our process is coming down everything is coming down the lord is giving he's helping providing so it's much easier to go down than to come up and the gyanis and yogis they have so much trouble labor to go up but the devotee we get the mercy of the lord coming down it's all given to us by the grace of the lord we just have to be surrendered to receive the mercy of the lord and prabhupad then quotes katha upanishad the lord can be known only by those whom he favors not by anybody else so krishna himself picks his devotees those people who are who are like the gyanis and yogis they don't they're not picked by krishna they don't get the favor of the lord so this is a important point to under the special mercy of the lord with how it comes on the devotees right i quoted that verse from bhagavad gita lord said i'm equal to everybody but he has special favor for his devotees 
So when the devotees come together, we have our special activities, devotional service, which these other people, they cannot understand. So, are there any questions on this? Um, Hare Krishna Maharas. Yes, Hare Krishna. Maharas, the last book of 15, that's I am not very clear on the concept of Hiranmaya Patrenu. Not very clear about that. Hiranmaya Patrena means to remove yeah. the covering. To remove the covering, yeah, because the Lord is covered by this effulgence, the Brahma Jyoti. So we want to go, we want to get through that covering to see that, the, to see the form of the Lord, to see the face of the Lord. So the prayer is to remove that covering of the Lord. We don't want to just be in the in the covering in the light. In that bright light, you can't see anything but the light. There's only the light everywhere. We want to go through that to see the actual form of the Lord, the face of the Lord, the features of the Lord. So the jnanis, the yogis, they're thinking the light, that's the goal. It's not the goal. But they're on the way. I told the other, I told the last time the girl was chanting and she said, Swamiji, when I chant I see a bright light. Prabhupada said, keep chanting, it will go away. Yes, last class you said that. Huh? Yeah, in last class you said that Prabhupada gave that example. Yeah. This morning and moon, this lighting though. Yeah. We're not, we're not. This is the beautiful Lord. We're not interested in this light, this effulgence. It's nothing. It's nothing for us. We just go, just go through it. Get to but the just. Jnani and mystic yogis, they are, they are, uh, they are looking for this light. Yes, that's right. They're thinking that's the goal. For them, that is the goal. They think liberation is the goal, but for devotee, liberation is not the goal. We're not worried yeah, about yeah, liberation. liberation. No, right. Devotional service begins on the liberated platform. Thank you, Morris. Any other questions? We can see, Prabhupada said, the all-pervading feature of the Lord, which exists. What is this all-pervading feature of the Lord? Paramatma? No, in this case it's not the Paramatma. In this case what's being talked about is the Brahman, right? From which the Jiva Shakti is generated as both conditioned and liberated souls, is known as Brahman. Waking. The Jiva Shakti is generated, the living force. So the gender, the living entity, so he, this means he is the origin, Brahman is the origin of all living entities and all else that exists. Those who know this engage at once in devotional service of the Lord. He is the origin of all living entities. So devotees are attached to the Lord, so we engage in glorifying Him, spiritual activities, glorifying the Lord, chanting His name, worshipping His deity form, 
speaking about the Lord's pastimes and potencies and energies and everything, offering prayers to Him. This is the business of devotees. But those who are not perfect, not pure devotees, they've only understood the Brahman or the Paramatma. They cannot understand what we're doing. So we have to create faith in them. You want to preach to these people? You have to create faith in them. You create faith. Sometimes prasadam, very good preaching. Give them nice prasadam, you'll convince them. Because these people, they don't have nice prasadam. They have dry philosophy and dry prasadam. But give them some nice nectar, you can attract them to Krishna consciousness. So preaching to these people, Mayavadis and Jnanis and Yogis, it, you, you, can, you can attract them with nice prasadam. Prasadam is very important. Nice prasadam, nice kirtan, very powerful, you can convince them. Philosophy is difficult. To talk philosophy with them, very difficult, but give them nice prasadam, you can convince them. Okay, so we will finish on Friday. We have two more classes to go and two, two mantras left. We will finish up on Friday. So thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Yeah. Maharaj, it's me, uh, Gopi Lakshmi, 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 L